Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and today we're going to take a look at Mountain Thane Warrior, the hero talent tree available to Fury and Prot Warriors. Mountain Thanes embody the strength of the mountains and the power of the storm. They channel thunder and lightning through their reinforced bodies to make them an unstoppable force. Interesting, uh, interesting fantasy here as well. One of the ones they talked about, one of the ones they showed a little bit at BlizzCon as well. Let's get right into it though by reading the, uh, the top node here. So... Uh, this is called Lightning Strikes, and it says, Damaging enemies with Thunderclap, Revenge, Raging Blow, or Execute has a 10% chance to also strike one with a Lightning Bolt, dealing moderate nature damage. Okay, so one of the enemies damaged by Thunderclap or Revenge, if it's a... Uh, you know, you're, you're only going to hit one of them, I see. And Lightning Strikes occur 50% more often during Avatar, so it'll be a 15% chance instead during Avatar. Okay, so a little damage proc. Damage doesn't go up in AoE situations, right? It'll, uh, it will, in fact, kind of occur randomly to one of the targets you're thunderclapping or revenging, so maybe it's even a little bit annoying that in that way uh, in AoE situations, but all right. Uh, let's see what the bottom keystone or capstone or whatever is to this tree. Uh, so this one is Avatar of the Storm. Casting Avatar grants you two charges of Thunder Blast and resets the cooldown of Thunderclap. While Avatar is not active, Lightning Strikes have a 10% chance to grant you Avatar for 4 seconds. Thunder Blast says your next Thunder Clap be becomes a Thunder Blast that deals Storm Strike damage. Okay, so uh, casting Avatar gives you... It resets the cooldown on Thunder Clap and turns it into Thunder Blast for 2 clicks. Uh, and those will do, I guess, more damage and Storm Strike damage uh, instead of what Fizz or whatever they do right now. I think Storm Strike is Fizz Nature, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, anyways... Either way, that is interesting. The 10% chance to give you Avatar for 4 seconds. 4 seconds isn't a lot of time, and Lightning Strikes are only occurring outside of Avatar on 10% of your abilities here, so that combines to a 1% chance, right? You get a 10% chance to make a Lightning Strike during when you press these abilities, and then that Lightning Strike has a 10% chance to give you Avatar for 4 seconds. So that's probably worth about four seconds of Avatar every, like, two minutes or something. Um, now, it does happen more often during Avatar, and so maybe this will extend your Avatars a little bit some of the time, but even then, we're still only talking about 1.5% of your Thunderclaps, Revenges, Raging Blows, or Executes doing this by default. Maybe there are some talents in some of these side wings that will increase the proc rate uh, or the chance of this happening. I don't know. Let's read the left wing here. So we start off with Call of Thunder. Storm Strike or Nature Damage, so this, this actually has two different effects. This has a different effect for Prot or Fury. The Prot version says, Storm Strike or Nature Damage, your abilities deal, is increased by 5%. Storm Strike Damage ignores armor. Uh, and Thunderclap Damage is increased by 50%. Okay, so Thunder Blast uh, is going to be your main Storm Strike damaging effect, right? Uh, so far that we know about. Uh, and its damage is going up, and it's going to ignore armor. And then Thunderclap's damage is also being amped up here. Nice. Very powerful effect uh, for, like, a lot of Prot Warrior M+. Plus over the years, Thunderclap has done a lot of their damage. So uh, maybe getting kind of an M+, plus or AoE theme uh, for Prot so far. Fury says, also this line about Stormstrike and Nature damage being increased by 5%, and Stormstrike ignoring armor. Thunderclap damage is increased by 50%, and it generates 50 Rage. And improved Whirlwind and Meat Cleaver now improve Thunderclap as well as Whirlwind. Okay, so this is changing Fury so that you press Thunderclap instead of Whirlwind, I guess, uh, is the, the kind of idea as the thing that makes it so that your, uh, your next abilities cleave afterwards. Cool. Nifty. Uh, that does seem like a good way of moving it in theme, and hopefully you can just replace Whirlwind with Thunderclap on your bar and be happy with it. And you don't need to still have Whirlwind bound as well, because uh, Thunderclap does have a cooldown, I think, uh, whereas Whirlwind generally does not, unless you, like, talent into it, right? Uh, up next is Thunder Blast. Okay, so again, we already know about Thunder Blast a little bit from the, the capstone, but Thunder Blast says, Shield Slam and Bloodthirst have a 20% chance to grant you Thunder Blast, stacking up to two charges, which makes your next Thunderclap a Thunder Blast. Okay, so you, you get two of them for free when you press Avatar, and you also will get them... 20% of the time that you press Shield Slam, which you press a lot, and Bloodthirst, which you press a lot. So this is going to give you, yeah, probably, you know, 10 Thunder Blasts a minute or something off of uh, off of these effects. Maybe a little bit less. Maybe maybe 8 or something. Maybe maybe 6. Maybe 5. I don't know. Uh, some napkin math that I'm trying to run in my head there. 
Up next is a choice node between Steadfast as the Peaks, which says Victory Rush increases your max HP by 10% for 5 seconds. Okay, this is a very, very minor effect. And the other option, keep your feet on the ground, which uh, my guild has been spamming ever since we all swapped to Dwarf for Fire Axe, so uh, that's, that's good. Thunder Blast reduces damage you take by 4% for 5 seconds. This seems like a very easy keep your feet on the ground is the default choice here. Uh, Steadfast of the Peaks is a lot more situational. Pressing Victory Rush or Impending Victory, even if this still works with that, uh, is something you do very rarely. And pressing Thunder Blast is going to be something you do all the time. And getting a 4% DR is really nice all the time. Uh, whereas, yeah, max HP increased by 10%. Uh, you know, that's nice, but that's going to happen a lot less often, I think. So, yeah, to me, this reads like an easy keep your feet on the ground in almost all cases. Uh, so maybe some a choice note they should look at again. Uh, here we have Ground Current that says Lightning Strikes also deal low damage to enemies near their target, reduced beyond five targets. All right, so we're moving this back into being something that actually does some stuff in AoE that's nice, like that. Uh, the next one is a choice node between Storm Shield and Storm Bolts. Storm Shield says intervening a target grants them a shield for five seconds that absorbs magic damage equal to three times your armor. Uh, so that'll be a moderately large uh, absorb shield on a target for magic damage. Definitely something that's nice. Uh, and also, it's worth noting that when you intervene somebody, you're already generally helping them against physical damage because most physical damage can be intervened uh, so that you take it instead. So that's nice. The other option, though, is Storm Bolt, which says Storm Bolt also hits two additional nearby targets, stunning them for two seconds. Now, this is powerful. It's it's not overpowered, right? It's not turning Storm Bolt into an AoE stun, because it still is only going to hit three targets, and the two additional targets are only stunned for two seconds. Uh, but this is a lot. This is definitely something that makes me think that this is going to be nice for, like, M+, right? Having a little bit of extra free stuns uh, built into your Storm Bolts uh, is going to be nice. So... Uh, I think that is definitely a, a powerful option here. And then you, I think you'll default to Storm Shield in Raid, and Storm Bolts in M+, is, is going to be how this choice node will usually work out. Next one is a choice node between Gathering Clouds and Thorim's Might. Gathering Clouds says your attacks trigger lightning strikes 15% more often. Now, 15% more often is interesting wording here, because I would read that not as taking the chance from 10 to, to 25, I would read the more often wording here as taking the chance from 10 to, you know, 11.5, um, which, yeah, depending on which one that is, that I think it's probably the 11.5 in this case, but the wording here is some, somewhat ambiguous. Um, that's how I think that probably works, though. So it's a, a modest increase to the amount of lightning strikes you're going to get. The other option says lightning strikes generate three rage, and revenge, raging blow, and execute damage is increased by 15%. So that seems really good. Uh, to increase the damage of these abilities by 15% because these abilities, you know, s uh, represent a lot of your damage. Um, so unless this is actually that that interpretation where it more than doubles the proc rate of Lightning Strike, uh, and instead, I, which I don't think would make sense, uh, I suspect that Thorin's Might is probably the better of these, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Next option here is Strength of the Mountain. Strength of the Mountain says Shield Slam's damage is increased by 20%. All right. Shield Slam's a lot of your single target on, on Brought Warrior. And Bloodthirst and Rampage damage is increased by 10%. All right. Those are a lot of your damage on Fury Warrior. So a lot of raw damage on this node. Next option is either Flashing Skies or Valorjar Training. Flashing, scry uh, Flashing Skies rather says Chance for Lightning Strikes to crit is increased by 5% and their crit damage is increased by 10%. The other option is Valorjar Training, which says Lightning Strikes reduces the cooldown of Ravager by 0.5 seconds. So I like that this is a choice node, so you don't have to take Ravager if you don't want to, um, and you can still take uh, Flashing Skies instead. Uh, obviously, a lot of this is just going to be tuning and build-based, whether there is value in reducing the cooldown of Ravager or not, whether it's something you're syncing with your other cooldowns. Um, again, my initial read of this is you're getting a pretty low amount of, of Lightning Strikes per minute, um, because it is only a 10% chance, and... Uh, that makes me think, and even if you enhance that with like Gathering Clouds and with Avatar, it's still not a huge chance, right? Um, so because of that, either of these I think will probably be pretty, still pretty minimal, but uh, have to see again, I guess, there. Interesting little bit of crit scaling here for Flashing Skies. Again, uh, crit something that generally has been more of a Fury stat than a Prot stat over the years, but we have seen uh, sometimes 
that not be true. Sometimes it's not something that Fury likes as much. Usually it is, though. Fury almost always does like crit uh, decently well, so increasing crit chance for them. The crit chance increase actually doesn't matter too much, but the crit damage increase, they're going to have higher base crit probably, uh, and we'll, we'll enjoy that more. And then the final one here is Burst of Power. Lightning Strikes have a 20% chance to make your next two Shield Slams or Bloodthirst have no cooldown. Wow, that is going to be really nice when it procs. Although, again, I'm reading this whole tree, I keep thinking like, okay, this is nice, but multiply the percents together, right? It's like, okay, Thunderclap, Revenge, Raging Blow, and Execute. Let's say that's half your globals, roughly, which it's, you know, it depends on whether you're playing Prod or Fury in this situation. So half of your globals have a 10% chance. So we're down to a 5% chance per global of getting a lightning strike. And then of those 5% of your globals, 20% will make your next shield slams or bloodthirst have no cooldown. So 1% of your globals will make your next two shield slams or bloodthirst have no cooldown. Now, even if we increase this rate by 15% to 1.15% of your globals, right? And we increase it by 50%, so we're up to like 1.7% of your globals. That's still... Not a lot. Like, these things aren't going to happen often. Getting these free Shield Slams and Bloodthirst isn't going to happen very often at all. It's like, a again, a once every two minutes type thing that you'll get one proc of this. Uh, and same with getting the free proc of Avatar. That's going to happen maybe even once every three or four minutes or something like that, if I'm reading this correctly. So, uh, interesting tree. There's a lot of power built into this. Um, but it actually seems like the Lightning Strikes part of it might be a little bit of a bait, and much of the damage might just come from the passive increase in value to Thunderclap. Uh, to storm strike damage, and to uh, getting this just extra free damage on shield slam, bloodthirst, and rampage. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, it's definitely an interesting tree. It's definitely cool, um, and maybe it's good that these sorts of random procs are pretty low frequency events because that will make it not overpower your rotation too much and not become too much of what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like very low chances on a lot of these things when you multiply all these percentages together. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of all of these hero talent trees. I hope you've enjoyed the videos today uh, of going through all of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.